city there, so that got me involved in a lot of uh, aspects. Uh, after I returned, uh, I uh, left back to and went to work for CH2M Hill, uh, so I could get back to Portland. Mm -hmm. so my wife told me that I followed you all around, it's your turn to help me get back closer to my parents. So, uh, I did that, and I was with them for 12 years or something like that. That included a couple more assignments in Saudi and two years in the UK and uh, half a year in Borneo. Uh, so in that background or career, I'm hoping that there are a number of experiences that I have uh, I've had that I can help you all out. And I really look forward to working with you on this. I believe in what the, what the district's doing. So that's me. Welcome. Thanks, Dan. Hi, I'm Tom Quillen. Um, I have uh, been on this debate for, I think I'm going to be my first year. So. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad to be the newest member of the committee. So um, thanks for taking that. Um, I uh, was at Intel for 20 years. and. Now I'm currently at McAfee Security Software Company. Uh, was on the I was uh, on the school board for seven years, and, uh, and also been in MIT. Like I'm, I'm a big supporter of the work that the district does and um, the the commitment to our, our kids. And, and um, I'm I'm just continue to be impressed with the, the good work and. Uh, Stewardship of the district shows every every year. So happy to be part of this. Thank you, Doug. And I'm Cheryl Tweedy. I'm a longtime Beaverton resident and mom of three kids who all graduated from Westview High School and went uh, completely through the Beaverton School District. So big supporter for many years of the school district. 
Um, my day job is I'm the Beaverton, City of Beaverton Community Development Director. Um, so I think I kind of wore a couple hats on this group. I kind of have a connection back to the city and trying to help uh, work with the great team here at BSD, get projects done, get them through that pipeline moving ahead. <coughs> and really enjoyed working with this enjoy working with the staff. No past tense there. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm the vice chair of the committee and I've been on it for my goodness, Tom. Not quite as long as you, I don't think. Early two thousand fourteen. Yeah, something like that. My name is Sarah Renu Kamat, and I've been on this committee for slightly over two years. I was at, uh, working at Intel as an engineer for 15 years, and I'm currently self-employed. Been in this district for 18 years. So. Um, Jerome Sabayan, uh, retired Army officer, uh, newly retired actually last year, um, 20 years in the Army, uh, 10 years uh, doing combat engineering. <laughs> Um, and then 10 years, Corps of Engineers, uh, various things like uh, projects and programs. I was the uh, Corps of Engineers Commander for Central America, so that was a fairly large program. Um, and then um, base engineer and other things. Uh, so a fair amount of uh, experience there. I was uh, classmates with Paul and all full disclosure. Um, and. You know, civil engineering, Oregon State, and uh, and I'm, I'm still known for the uh, Sabayan fudge factor, so which is you know there's none of that in these documents, which, <laughs> which, which was something I invented in order to get the right answer on homework. Um, but uh, uh, other than that, um, did the last eight years in the army as a. Uh, professor at the Army War College. Um, I have a PhD in national security. Um, taught, uh, taught national security and international relations and had fun, but our time was done. So here I am. I was raised in Salem, by the way. So Good. I'm Maureen Wheeler, the communications officer for the district. I uh, started my 29th year with the district. Um, almost 19 years in this particular role as a communications officer, and my role is to help bring to life the work that's happening with the bond. But prior to that, I, of course, was working with Tom and the committee that, to help develop the whole bond measure programming, um, then work on the elections, doing all the polling and different things like that, and just really packaging and putting together something that our community can get behind and, and support, and they have, and continue to do so. So thank you for your uh, work on the committee. Uh, David Williams, Administrator for Strategic Initiatives for the District, which <clears throat> basically means my job description is just other duties as assigned. <laughs> you had a lot of those. <laughs> That's right. I'm Carl Mead. I'm the Deputy Superintendent for Support Services and Operations. And so we have two Deputy Superintendents in the organization. One oversees teaching and learning. And anything not to do with teaching and learning is falls typically under operations and support services, with the exception of these two individuals here. Um, and their departments. Uh, so I work with facilities and maintenance, transportation, security, nutrition services, HR, IT, um, which is a great opportunity to be able to bring those groups together. This is the start of my 33rd year in the school district. I started out, I started taught here, teacher at two of the levels and a principal at all three levels. Uh, so come in with the best array of knowledge in terms of experience in the district and having also sat in the deputy superintendent seat of teaching and learning, and now this is the start of my third year in this seat. And also a very proud father of two graduates from Sunset High School and the youngest started her senior year this year. So very excited. So now we're on the college hunt. <laughs> I'm Gail Jacobson, I'm the CFO. Uh, I have been with the district for about 16 years. Before I came to the district, I worked for um, public accounting and then private industry started as an aide here at the district uh, at Cedar Mill and Cedar Park and moved to business office and have moved my, my way up. Um, I'm also um, the proud parent of two uh, Sunset High School graduates. Um, my boys are um, 26 and 29. Can't believe that. But, and one was in the Navy for eight years as a Navy corpsman and diver. Uh, John Irwin, I'm the construction programs manager, so I work with the bond team under Sherry, 
Uh, I am a graduate of the Beaver School District, um, and I was the first new hire for the 2014 bond program as the accountant in 2014. So, yeah. grizzled veteran at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aaron Boyle, I'm the construction operations supervisor, so I work with all of our different projects and just help. Um, uh, you know, plan upcoming projects, deal with current issues, do a lot of the buzzing and stuff. John and I do. So, uh, lots going on. I've been here for four years. Uh, part of that, I worked as a project manager in commercial development, and part of that, residential development. Uh, yeah, lots of work. Working at school. Right, so I, I, uh, I'm a graduate of Oregon State, the CEM program. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Sherry Stanley, um, the Administrator for Facilities Development. Um, I've been here for 12 years, and I think I've had a, maybe six positions here. Um, I was Energy Manager, I was a Project Manager, I was an Operations Manager. Um, <clears throat> prior to that, I actually was a Mechanical Engineer, and I had the privilege of working for the Navy, but as a civilian down in San Diego. Lots of fun. I saw dolphins every day. <laughs> yeah, seriously, it was super fun. Um, proud mom of three Westview High School graduates, all now married, which I can't believe, uh, and expecting our first grandchild in February. So, wow. yes, very exciting. Awesome. I'm Paul Odenthal, I'm the Executive Administrator for Facilities, so I oversee the bond team. Uh, Sherry does all the work, I just get a cheerlead, right, and uh, look good because of what they do. And, but then also uh, the maintenance organization for the district as well which also do great things that make me look good all the time as well. So great team, but overall looking at all the facilities across the district. So uh, native of state in Oregon, outside Salem, uh, 28 years ago, graduated from Oregon State, uh, 28 years in the Navy, uh, retired just last year, been with the school district here for a year. And my background, I was a Navy Civil Engineer Corps officer and a CB, so uh, construction a little bit in the combat environment, but also managing public works for the bases, construction contracts for all of the Navy's, Navy's facilities as well. And uh, I, have, I have four children, uh, two in the Beaverton School District. Uh, my son's an eighth grader at Stoller, a senior at Westview. And then I have an older daughter who's in her third year of medical school at UVA. And uh, a son that is uh, married. And uh, today is actually my granddaughter's uh, first birthday. They're down in they're in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, right now, as well. They seem to stay where uh, where they where they graduated high school in the Navy career. <laughs> so one in Virginia and one in Mississippi or uh, Louisiana, but close to Mississippi. Cool. Hi, I'm uh, Eric Simpson. I'm the school board representative on the, the this committee, and um, I've been on the school board for three years. Um, I graduated since high school in 1990, and I uh, moved into district, so my kids will graduate in Sunset and into the future. <laughs> Um, my background, um, engineering, uh, Intel, chemical engineering, and um, project management for about 23 years. And I'm um, an entrepreneur. I have like a small business, like a doggy daycare for 15 years with like 40 employees, which is very operational related. So, so I like this committee a lot. Fits to what I enjoy. Budgetary things. <laughs> Well, thank you for being here. I think it's great to have that direct kind of line of communication with the school board and um, have your, your insights to do the meeting. Well, let's get on with it then. Uh, first order of business tonight is the bond update report from um, all three staffs. Sure. So we'll go. We'll get to our bond update report here. Uh, so for for Dick and Jerome, as I showed you in the email, we're we're bringing you in tonight very cold. We know that uh, we haven't done orientation with you yet, but we'll. I know we'll we'll kind of be talking about things that you're not fully up on yet. But we will uh, work with Cheryl and Brian to schedule a time to sit down and bring you up to speed on the entire program from the staff before our next meeting as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so looking at the report we have, we've published a monthly update which includes financials and an, and an update on how we're doing on the project there. And we try to capture most of the relevant uh, new information on page two, which is our executive summary. So if we, uh, if we can go to, to page two and you've got the paper copy in front of you, you have the chart there that shows the, uh, how we're doing on our program reserve. Uh, there we have, uh, so for the, our new members, we have a, a program reserve that's unallocated to projects of $38.2 million across the $680 million program, uh, which is a nice uh, cushion to have there as well. 
And then with the the purple line there shows that that reserve with our project contingencies that we're holding on individual projects. So we're at 52.7. That dip reflects uh, investments that were uh, approved by the board uh, just about two months ago for, for additional security work across the district as well. Uh, that, that box here, you can see the, uh, the change. Our, our, uh, our reserve has stayed steady across this month, and uh, we dipped uh, 345000 in the uh, overall contingency where we dipped in. And just to look at the notes there, um, over, going over the progress there. So Hazeldale, we said progressing well. Uh, we opened school. We got kids in there. So uh, one of those things, we have sub substantial completion. There's still work to be done in Hazeldale while we have the kids. But we got the kids in, and uh, school started, which is great news. Uh, William Walker, we're, uh, we started the demolition process here at the last of the school year. And uh, we've had a lot of issues with unforeseen asbestos uh, uh, in the building, which has slowed us down. Right now, we're about four weeks behind schedule where we'd like to be, and we have some costs that we're incurring as well, which I don't have completely definitized. Uh, we'll have that next month as we negotiate with the contractor. So right now, it is one we're putting on our watch list that we're concerned about, uh, but we're working with the contractor of how we can regain schedule as well. And we have a July completion for that project, uh, which will, with this, pushes us out into August. So. We're concerned. It's uh, one we want to watch closely, uh, but we feel we have time to uh, make up ground and get that back on track. Um, from the budget perspective, there again, just some just some minor things there. Hazeldale, we actually brought some money back into the contingency, so that was a plus up of 200k that we were able to recover from the the project cost itself, and felt like we could move that back to contingency. The uh, Five Oaks. Uh, we've put additional 420k that we put into that project as well, and that was a result of our our negotiations for the guaranteed maximum price with the contractor on the Five Oaks renovation project. That's a that's one of our middle schools in the middle of Beaverton, uh, two-year project there, phase construction. So, uh, really, while we while we've invested that contingency into the project, it's uh, it's a good thing for us because we've established that guaranteed minimum maximum price, guaranteed maximum price for the entire project across the two years. So we feel that's a success story for us as well. Uh, let's see. Raleigh Hills is another one that uh, we put it on the on the watch list at this time. We're waiting for, uh, we're in discussions with the county about improvements uh, to the road out there uh, that they may require us to do. Uh, we don't have a decision as well, so we haven't, uh, uh, we don't know what the cost will be if there's additional road work that has to happen on Shoals Ferry out in that area. but. For, for now, we, we just watch listed it as we talk about that project going forward as well. That's a, uh, Raleigh Hills is a K through eight school, and we have about a $10 million uh, addition plan for that facility as well. Uh, Ridgewood, uh, that's a project where we, we had to increase the budget there as well. Ridgewood is one of our elementary schools, and we've air conditioned the classrooms uh, just for the start of school this year. And uh, we had to plus up the budget there a little bit as we got into the uh, building and found some piping that needed to be reworked in there as well that we thought we could reuse in the system. And then also the uh, 130K that you see for William Walker, that's kind of the start of the asbestos uh, that we found in the building as well. And, but that, that will be going up as we, uh, we finalize negotiations over the next month with the contractor. So I'll stop there for a minute. Any questions on the budget perspective? Uh, Schedule-wise, I think the important thing down there, just to point out again, is we already talked about William Walker and where we're at. And then uh, just projects, the uh, Five Oaks, uh, we finished uh, phase one, the major part of phase one, which was uh, we've added nine additional classrooms to Five Oaks within the existing footprint. So those are, those are in place and kids are going to school in those uh, classrooms that we put in place there. And uh, we're moving to phase two now at Five Oaks, which is actually building the addition uh, where the uh, portables were as well. So excited to move into that. And then uh, we continue on with our design development with ACMA and should have some good pricing here in the near future. So any questions on the schedule? All right. Going to our, uh, as I call the chiclet charts, we'll go to page... <laughs> Page four quickly, and I'll just point out some of the changes there we've mostly already talked about. Uh, so the 
we've, you can see where we've established some uh, yellow at Raleigh Hills uh, related to budget and overall uh, just from the discussion with the uh, with the county, uh, William Walker as well. The, right now, we've made the schedule perspective red at this point, as we feel we have ground to make up. But we hope to improve on that. Uh, moving to uh, again on the budget side, to the budget perspective, you can uh, that reflects from the the overall as well. So some changes on there, uh, but again, just related to those earlier comments. Hey, Paul, I probably should have asked this earlier. We were talking about Raleigh Hills uh, and a potential uh, road re replacement. Why, why would the school district be responsible for the road? <laughs> so, so as we, um, w with all things in the within the city and the county, as we make changes to our schools, there's a requirement to look at the impact to traffic and transportation in the area there as well, and to work with the city and the county to make those improvements. So this is one that we changed the, we're changing the traffic pattern on the property of where the buses and the parents will do their drop off as well. So it affects, it affects the road. And so there's a discussion uh, ongoing with the city about how much work they would like us to do on the road at the school. Actually the pavement or just lighting up? That's it. We, we would like it to be very minimal as well, uh, but it, it, there's potential and the county is looking at the addition of another lane. It's Right now in this area, Schultz Ferry is a two-lane road as well, and they'd like the third lane added as discussion as well. And, and I can add that recently the city applied for a million-dollar grant for sidewalk improvement project on Laurelwood. It's the safe routes to school program through the state, so we're optimistic we'll be able to get that and to contribute to some of those off-site improvements for the project. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to skip ahead several pages just to point out one other change. If you go to page 14, this is our... Uh, this is the summary of our district-wide repair projects. So this is the, uh, it's about actually 450 smaller projects that are in this. And I think we've all known it as the 98 million project. Okay. So uh, we've done some put and takes, puts and takes, of course. So the 98 million now, if you look at the bottom, is actually 94.6 as we moved uh, that last piece. We moved some of the funds. Um, from this project that we're here for the roof at Aloha High School, we've combined that into our seismic project. So that's why, why it's come down to the 94. Uh, plus we've had a few additions there of the piping project we did at Bethany. Uh, another great success this summer, we completely repiped Bethany Elementary School. Uh, contractor did a great job, finished up ahead of schedule in there as well. Uh, so. Yeah, it was our it was our it was our one school where we couldn't resolve lead, and we had uh, three drinking fountains in there that we had to rope off as well. So uh, we just made the decision. We had other issues with the plumbing that building as well with leaks and problems. Uh, so the the board with the BAC's recommendation uh, added that project, and we were able to repipe the whole building and get them get to, get it up to a better water quality. <coughs> So this we've added. We just so this is our 98 million project. And the one thing you'll notice if you look at the the last line in the ta table there, um, we're, we're reflecting the cost that we projected at our estimate of completion. As you know, we, we presented that uh, the 98 million project to complete all the work that's foreseen in there and has been committed to the voters is going to cost uh, 122 million dollars. So we're reflecting that piece here where we've got that. The, uh, the 25 million, where it says repair, repair, repair program EAC balance at 25 million, we're reflecting that piece <laughs> of this project that, that is needed to take us to completion of this work, um, but is not allocated to a specific project at this point. Does that make sense? Right, so that's the that's that 25 million is our estimate to complete that work that is not not specifically scheduled on here yet uh, to get to that final piece. And we also added the chart. As, as we know, the board, the board uh, decided to wait on this, just uh, that uh, discussion on the EAC that we would, we would re-engage this as we get closer to uh, that $94 million being expended down the road as well. So we're, we're tracking that against that and keeping track against our complete, our total EAC for the project. 
Any questions on that? Dick, did you have a question on the lead at Bethany? Did you have a question regarding Bethany? Okay. Okay, and from there, I just uh, will. Uh, <clears throat> Sherry was. Th so, any other questions on this report? I think that's all I was going to brief. And this is why well, you have a, a glossy sheet that has some great pictures of Hazeldale and, uh, and William Walker. I guess the William Walker pictures aren't that great because it's stuff that's getting torn down. But uh, it'll soon look like Hazeldale on the front. And we just have some new August updates that have been uploaded to the webpage, so check those out. Under each, if you go to the, um, the district's website, you'll find a thumbnail of each project, and there'll be archived construction updates as you're interested in that. Right. So if there's no questions, I, what Sherry's going to do is she's going to show a couple things on our website here where you can see uh, our webcams we have out on the schools and the projects underway. So this is the school bond project website. I don't know if you guys have been there before. I thought I'd mainly just show that our newest members where this information can be found because almost everything that you'll need to know is going to be here. So it starts with this first page that has all of our construction projects. Um, if you actually click into Hazeldale, the webcam is there. And this is pretty fun. You click on mo uh, excuse me desktop. <clears throat> and you end up being able to play from the very start. Um, in fact, go ahead and click right here, and you can see the old, this one. It'll, it'll go to the old building. So there, there's what it used to look like. It's very many. That's um, great. Yeah. So you can play it. You can adjust the playback speed and the playback interval. You can look at every single image, or you can speed it up to maybe every day. But it's pretty fun to watch. <laughs> well, you guys are fast. <laughs> so we have these cameras at all of our large sites, so they are also archived for the other schools that we have done. Um, and of course, William Walker is now um, shown, and David can go ahead and pause this and minimize it, and we'll go to the next the William Walker site. I know, right? It's pretty fun. Hello. Can see this guy? Yeah, there you go. So if you scroll down a little bit, the other projects are here. So William Walker. And then the webcam is up there in blue. Yep. We gotta clean the camera. <laughs> Look at looking into the break. There's the before. Yeah, so there we are. <laughs> we had removed the portables by this time. And the fun began. Where's the roof So it's that yeah, the the building all the way to the left. Uh -huh. So this one, yeah, so the one that was right here gone. had that pitched roof. It was gone. <coughs> Underneath the roof was the old roof. Oh, that's looking good. <laughs> yeah, which should be coming down tomorrow, I believe, right? It's definitely tomorrow. So we'll have all the buildings in tomorrow. Check the name. Check the webcam. So these are also mobile enabled. I actually have just a button on my phone I can click and check in and see what's going on there. Yeah. So then I just wanted to show you a little bit more about other parts of the website. So go ahead. Perfect. This is actually clickable. Um, you can zoom in and see all the things that we did. So this is the 2018 activity map. We'll be replacing it with the 29 activity map pretty soon. And these blue ones are Right, the blue ones are clickable. Very good. They'll get you to all the individual project pages as well. And then again, um, down lower is <clears throat> past bond projects, the ones that have been cle completed. You don't need to click any of these, but these are all similar to what you've seen up there. Project cameras, recording still there. Down here is where a lot of information is on how the bond was built. And then the Bond Accountability Committee, you guys have your own web page. So if you click into there, that's where all the old meeting information is. You can find all of the monthly financial reports on that bottom um, 
button there. You can also get to them. Um, the committee charter is here. Um, the roster is up there. So any information about the bond accountability is posted here, as well as emailed out to you. But if you're ever wondering about any information, it's all here. That's it. Is there any place there that has some kind of a, a brief scope of each one of these projects? Yes. Written? Yes, there is. So one of the, if you scroll down a little bit down here, so the 2014 program project list, that's a really great sum, summary that's clickable. So these are clickable, you can go into each one of these and it pulls up a summary of the purpose, the scope, any photos or illustrations we had at the time, cost estimates, the year the estimate was created. So all those links in there will get you to some pretty detailed information on each one of them. That's good. Yeah. That was a great question. We have our construction um, program goals here, um, information on the bond measure from the past, which is a lot of what Maureen helped us with, of course. Uh, and then we try to also just give you an overview of the schedule here. We probably post one of these every probably six months by now. So this is pretty fun because we're right here, and to look at all that's been accomplished, so over 400 million is in place now. We're halfway through, or a little more. Um, we need to update this to put us kind of right here. This is that $98 million project that we were, that Paul was referencing earlier. And then of course we are in design and construction right now of um, the Five Oaks project. We have finished uh, Hazeldale. We only have one more elementary school, William Walker. Um, but this is kind of the, the bulk of what we'll have to do for the rest of our years. Uh, in addition to the security upgrades, which will take us oh, a while to, to accomplish. And then, of course, the big projects that are left are the, um, the rest of the Five Oaks renovation, the Raleigh Hills <coughs> renovation, and finally replacing ACMA, which is the Arts and Communications Magnet Academy, which is basically a high school that is currently housed in an elementary school. That, and it's an option school, so it's not your neighborhood school that's 42 acres big with all of the fields, but it is a... That's going to be a really fun project to replace this very old elementary school that houses the high school. Middle school and high school. Oh, uh, Six to twelve. Program. Six to twelve. Okay. All right. And that is that's that's the uh, bond update report. Thank you. I have a quick question. How did the transition to Timberland Middle School happen? The William Walker It went very well, very smooth as well. They got in there. We also have also the Rachel Carson uh, program uh, from Five Oaks is also up there as well. So it went very smoothly as well. We sent Carl up there to be the head traffic cop that day. <laughs> and he kept things under control on the first day of classes. Last year we held a lot of lessons learned meetings because the first transition into Timberland went was a challenge, um, and we learned a lot from that. I think we had a lot of really good um, folks came together from all the departments, nutrition services, transportation, um, our, our uh, public safety group. Um, we met throughout the entire year just talking about how we could have done things better. Everything from a nutrition services delivery with a food showed up on the first day of school and tried to come in where all the parents were coming to drop off their children. So just, just different things like that that you would, you would think we had control, but we didn't. Um, and uh, we were, I was really excited that the principals even got together, the, the outgoing principal and the incoming principal, and they, they helped each other out by saying, this is what happened, please be prepared. And you know, it, it started all the way back in December of the year pre previous when the principal started really encouraging her um, teachers to start purging. Because, I mean, you wouldn't realize it, but teachers really like to hold on to stuff. And so really purging and packing, and it started from that long ago. So, Thank you. Did you want to go over the, the balance of the documents in the packet? 
I, I can. So the next the next item is the uh, project selection process, and this is a discussion that we had at our last meeting in uh, in the spring, in May that we introduced a process for dealing with the potential of additional projects using the program reserve, and uh, we wanted to bring it up for a follow-on discussion tonight to see if there's. Uh, and we we introduced it at that meeting and asked uh, the committee to reflect on it after some robust discussion we had that night and just to see if there's any other further thoughts from the uh, committee as well. So again, just for our new members, we have that program reserve of 38 million that is in the program now. And uh, we, at, at this point, the the board and the BAC both have said, uh, we, we do not want to invest in that money in new projects at this time. We need to hold that uh, for the health of the program as we go forward in case we have, we are dealing with a, uh, a very uh, growing construction market and a tight market as well. And so I think, I think everyone is in agreement that we don't want to spend that money now uh, other than some of the, the high priorities have come up for security. We want to hold that program reserve. However, we want a process in place uh, later in the bond when we decide that we have that comfort level that we can invest that money. We have a process for deciding, uh, for taking in prioritizing projects and making decisions that the, that the board can use as well. So I have the, the next packet has several things. So on the, on the top there you have the, the uh, capital construction bond program goals, the June 13, 2016. Uh, so this was a document uh, from the board that set our goals for the program. And I think it's just a great, uh, great background document that helps us to keep focused on the board's expectations for how we invest and what we're accomplishing in the bond. And we used we used this document as the basis for our criteria that we proposed as well. Um, so going to the next page of the the project, you have the process that we proposed. And again, we discussed this this last uh, last meeting. It's a scoring criteria that if you go, there's the table attachment with it. And we've taken the, uh, the areas that the board gave us as the, the program goals. And we've, we have, as projects come in, our intent is that they are ranked. And we've put weightings across those, across the top. So you see for uh, criteria A, are comfortable, safe, and secure, we put a 25% weighting factor on that on that particular criteria that that carries that that much importance to the program and these were these were staff recommendations that can change on the percentages as well uh, so we came we, we we built this criteria and as far as the process as projects uh, our thought process on it was that we did not want to have to uh, put all that work to the bond accountability committee to do that piece we wanted you to be more of an evaluation and oversight committee of that piece. So our, our thought of process is uh, as projects come in from the community, from our administrators across the district, from my staff as well, we will, we will, we will have a committee within the district headquarters here that will rank those projects and come up with those numbers, prioritize those, and give those to the bond accountability committee, then to review our work uh, see if you agree with how we've ranked them and, and have that power to, to move up or move down projects based on, on how you want to recommend work to the board for the decision factors on what's pursued. So, so we, went, we went through this last time. Uh, Cheryl, I know you weren't there with us this last time. So uh, we had a good discussion, and I think we, at the end of it, uh, a lot of thoughts from the, uh, from the committee here, but we kind of tabled it uh, for further discussion. So I'll, at that point, I'll just leave it on the table for discussion. Are you looking for any action from the back tonight? So, uh, not specifically. We're not. We're not really. We're not in a rush to have this document in place. We have time uh, before we get this to the board. I think it's one of the uh, perhaps a goal for the for the committee is to get this to the board. Uh, I don't look at you, Eric. You know, within within the school year, to have this process up to the to the board with the recommendation. Does that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I think the board was like saying, be patient, and you have a couple big projects in the queue. Um, so, but by the end of the year, you know, if you start knocking off like five oaks and some of their maybe riskier projects, then this is about to have the appetite to, to allocate new projects, possibly, depending on where we're at. Thank you. Paul, where's 
ACMA at this point does any cost, have any bids cost anything started coming in have any idea where we're at as compared to the 39 before the to this budget is so we're we're in the we we're go ahead Aaron we've got the latest yeah. uh, so we just finished the design development phase and so we're we're we have cost estimated that it came so we have two independent cost estimators right one of them was a couple million over one was one million over so we're working on reconciling those costs and then bringing it back down to budget right now before we proceed with design of the bid documents uh, the project will bid in like February time frame so it'll, it'll be a, a hard bid um, so the goal is, of course, to have our, our project estimate on budget by the time we go out to bid. So it's looking good. I, I, I think the team has done a really good job of getting it really close to where we need to be. Okay. Well, that, that's the that's the big one that's out there. Absolutely. And, uh, we know it's not going to be another high school, but uh, it, we're really optimistic that we're, we're going to get some good competition on the project. The fact that uh, uh, the schedule is extended to two years should really help out a lot. It's, it's tough for local builders to turn these things around in one year, and, and the extra year will really incentivize a lot of uh, people to want to propose on the project. Okay, thanks. Can I ask a couple questions? Um, so the first one is, is, is there a way to incorporate in this matrix, the selection matrix, some way of understanding where a project would sit in that facility's life cycle um, in terms of, uh, you know, my reference would be a, a master plan. And, you know, how, how does that fit into the master plan? Um, and, and the second question I have is, is there a way to um, look at these project proposals as um, maybe also either design development and then construction so that if you can't fund construction maybe you can fund the design development you can have something sitting on the shelf and the next bond rolls around and, um, that way that way that might ease the this Tetris kind of effect you know in trying to spend all the money which I assume we want to do um, and uh, maybe more efficiently do that. Um, good, 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 good discussion. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I apologize. I wasn't at the <coughs> back meeting. Is uh, I, I guess I'd be curious if I could put you on the spot, Eric. Is does the board have any preference on uh, whether it's, it's important to spend the dollars on facilities, or is it better to? keep some dollars in reserve for future bond measures and future projects. I think there's this fear of like making sure that um, early projects, you know, all those cost escalations and inflation, yeah. and the worries like the last two projects could, you know, represent our hiccup. I think Tom mentioned it, you know, like ACMA could be you know, problematic, you never know, maybe it's 20 million over, and then you have problems. So I think it's this conservative nature, so they probably, you know, so I think this year will play out, and then you know, we'll have a lot higher confidence on the last main reserve and contingencies. And um, I think the main feels like um, conservative because they want to make sure that they um, complete all the projects that were offered to the stakeholders on the initial you know, bond offer. Like everything got done, nothing was put on to the next one. And then, um, and then yeah, if there's money left over, I think um, there would be appetite to do projects all the way to the end and, and win another bond. Because we have a lot more projects in the future we need to do for the district. So. We want to deliver on what we promised the voters. Yeah, yeah. hit the promises that, you know, in our little pamphlets, which are great, especially when we knock them off. That's awesome. Everybody says, good job. And then, um, so, you know, that's why I think a whole year, school year is a long time, but by the end of the year, we should have more confidence on the last couple big projects. Um, I'm pretty sure that's where, like, you know, five, six, all the board members would probably feel that way. Yeah, thank you. I think it's important to remember too. We have that estimate of completion for the 98 million for the district-wide repairs, which is not completely funded, and would be if if the decision is to pursue all of that work, that would be out of the program as well to complete that, which is a good chunk of that. Yeah, that ten years of that, right? And 
looking at the criteria in the form, the, the only other thought that comes to mind would be if, um, if the districts receive funding from the state or the federal government grant funding and we need local match for it, would, would that uh, rise to the importance of deserving some weight on the consideration here? It certainly could, yes. In fact, we did one of the things that the board uh, funded this last discussion uh, that they approved was we increased the seismic budget because of the grants, the matching grants that are available from the state. So, for instance, we had a we had a good grant at Loa High School for that. Uh, the board approved additional money into the seismic so we can pursue uh, grants for for other schools to bring them up to the immediate occupancy standard. Any other thoughts or comments? You, you may have mentioned that I missed it. Who comes up with these uh, scores? Is it a collective thing? or? or? So our, our intent of this process is that we, we will have a committee uh, within the staff. So it will be it will be some of my staff, but we'll also reach to the teaching staff of the district uh, to have a committee together that will do the scoring of the projects as, as they come in against the criteria that you've established. Okay, so and these numbers in here are just for example. Yeah, these, these are examples that we made up as well. To give you an idea in our mind of, of we, you know, we, we tried to score them honestly as how we think they would come in against this criteria to give you an idea of how the, you know, a fire alarm replacement would happen. Uh, you know, some of those those ones that you can see where they would fall out on the scale based on the type of projects. Just to give you an idea of how we think this criteria will, will fall out. And again, that's all those, those weighting factors can all be uh, the recommendation to the board of how they approve this process is, is yours as the, as the accountability committee to propose that to the board. And, and over what uh, timeline are you going to be implementing this process? So again, as Eric said, we've got we're we're early, we're right in the in the uh, in the bond program. We're not to a point yet where we feel uh, we can accept other projects into the program. We've got that thirty-eight million dollar reserve. Uh, we still have about four hundred million or three hundred million worth of work to do, uh, of project work across the, the 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 part that's been programmed as well. So at this point, we want to hold that reserve. Um, so really, we're looking, we're looking probably about a year from now to start discussions and probably at the two-year point where we might decide to add additional projects in, in use of these funds. So this is, again, at this point, we want to get, the, we want to get a criteria in place. Um, certainly, we can tell you from, the, from our community perspective, uh, when we've advertised out there that there's this program reserve, uh, there's many people who have already decided how it's going to be spent across the district. Uh, purple track. Uh, uh, so, uh, so we want to get this criteria in place and come up with a process which allows the community to, uh, our administrators and our community to come in with what, how they would like to see the money is spent, have a transparent uh, process to the community that we think is equitable as well uh, to, to intake this work and make decisions. Uh, or make our recommendations to the board. Okay. Well, uh, given that this is going to go on for some time, will you be giving us updates? Uh, not, maybe not play by play, but summary as we have meetings of the uh, of the financial uh, of the process of this process. Like. Right. So we we will if once we approve this, we won't we won't ask for projects um, until that point. At, at this point, we won't be asking the community to give us ideas yet. Uh, we'll, we'll be waiting until that decision point is that uh, between the, the Bond Accountability Committee uh, to the board, that decision that says, okay, at this point, we've got the comfort now that we believe we can invest these funds in the future projects, and then we'll open up the gates to, to gather uh, ideas. And this is, again, this is your process. We want to do the, as a staff, we want to do the work, the hard work here, but we want it to be the, the Accountability Committee's process that we're going to present to you our recommendations and then it's for you to, to manipulate that, decide how that gets prioritized, uh, putting that lens of the community on it before it goes to the board for a decision. 
So when the project requests finally come in the ways, uh, various readings uh, or the priorities and the ratings be published to everyone so that people can look at it and see. Right. Yeah. It'll be it'll be a transparent. We our our intention here is that you know we would publish these documents as a process once it's approved by the board, and uh, we'll have, we're, we've already kind of worked on a electronic form that would go with this that. Uh, can be put into the into the system. So people can see why their project is sort of not being taken off with its others. Correct, right, right. They can see, they don't have to agree, but they can see. Yeah, but it, it, it sounds like we've done this before. So the, so the follow up it would be then we should have a very good line of defense as to why this particular project has got, or rather the headings and these ratings. That's what I was trying to get at the end, because if we agree, we don't agree, and right. come back with questions. Yes. So this is a very different process than everything else we've worked on with the back in that it is potentially more community-driven as opposed to staff-driven based on the priorities of the bond measure itself. Um, it probably means that when this is up and running, at some point in time, we'll need to have really good communication with the community about what this process is, how people access it, the mm -hmm. kinds of projects that could be eligible for it. it what you're describing, uh, and you'll remember the time uh, when we got the first word that the high school was going over the first 48 million, uh, you put out some talking points that came from Jeff, I believe, at the time. Mm -hmm. Change hadn't taken place yet, but, uh, but that's, I think that's what you're talking about, is having something that can go on the, the website Absolutely. or off to the newspapers or just the talking points of here's where we are and why we're here and mm -hmm. what's being done. Uh, because there's bound to be a lot of expected communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll work very closely with the team um, to craft what that communications and community engagement process is going to look like um, and how it fits with what the goals of, the, of doing this project evaluation process. I think the emphasis on the, the transparency in this is going to be mm -hmm. huge because it, let's say there's $10 million left at the end. I promise you, our community will come in to us with hundreds of millions of dollars right. of requests. And we're going to look like a bunch of ogres. I mean, it's, no, you guys are going to look like a bunch of ogres. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's just a matter of trying to be realistic with that because there's a lot of want and desire in our community. <clears throat> so I think the transparency of, I think even to getting, just having a number here may be difficult for somebody to understand, having a want. What was meant by that want? in a rating of are comfortable, safe, and secure. Why did it get a one and not a three? So the rationale behind the numbers is going to be important, too. I think it's going to be really important that we do manage those expectations, because I think, what does 10 million? It, it goes really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. It's nothing. Yeah. yeah, and the size of its budget, right. Right. Uh, overall bond. So. Well, the other thought was that was going through my mind is, this is really a great new story for the school district. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Next June, we're still Mortgage sitting tape. on this $38 <laughs> million dollar pot of yeah. money. I mean, that shows very good fiscal management and responsibility by the district and the mm -hmm. board. And I think we want to kind of walk around proudly and, 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 and really make it. the community understand that. And I think that's what the next one. Eric's saying, and what I've heard from other board members, that uh, <clears throat> they want to make sure that everything that is yeah. on the project list is yeah. done, yeah. and then they're going to feel comfortable. And the public should feel, just like you said, it should be a, a gold star for the district because here we've, we've completed everything we promised and we've got whatever the amount is. Uh, if it were the $38 million, they'll still have $100 million <laughs> in requests. It's, uh, well, I mean, how, this, how that all fits in then with the next bond. Right. right. <laughs> I mean, we have to really think about strategically next. what's in that next package exactly. as we right. start to marry and look at all of that. So, yeah. You guys came during a good time, Joel. Yep. Yeah, you guys have a problem that 
Every other school district wish they had. <laughs> yeah, I would. Portland, true. Yeah, true. Yeah. 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 He's been around a couple of years. It's stressful. Be, uh, <laughs> wouldn't we? Construction escalation. Nice uh, yeah. introduction. <laughs> So, folks, I'd suggest we keep thinking about this and bring it back at our next meeting. And um, I know we've got a couple of people missing today. Make sure we get full input by all the board members, staff members, and uh, maybe we can beat our homework assignment due date. So in your package, you also have uh, Lauren's work here, which is the uh, community involvement update. And so you've heard a little bit of it, and certainly by showing you the website, you'll find a lot of this information. But just want to highlight a few things. Um, we will have a William Walker is going to have a groundbreaking on uh, Saturday, September 15th, and you will be receiving an invitation. Please join us. It's always a very joyous occasion. And what's really wonderful about really the schools that we're doing, rebuilding, is they're Title I schools, and they're in neighborhoods that are very challenged. And these are such gifts such welcome gifts and wonderful assets to the community and the neighborhoods that it's just great. The kids are there and they actually help to shovel some dirt and we have some fun with it. It's an hour in and out and, and we're done with that. So that'll be from 10 to 11 on Saturday, September 15th. Um, then Hazeldale will have a dedication and grand opening uh, in, on Wednesday, October 24th in the evening, and I don't have all the details quite yet. But again, you'll be receiving an invitation, and we just encourage you to join us in, in celebrating that new, brand new school. And that, again, another Title I school in a, in a neighborhood that has been deferred in terms of improvements, and it's a wonderful asset to that area of the district. Uh, we are in the process of planning the uh, Follow Bond Community uh, newsletter. It will be an e-newsletter uh, due to funding implications and uh, we'll have a robust distribution program on that. We're expecting to publish that uh, late October um, 2018. And um, let's see here. Did you want to talk a little bit about um, on VOS, the building, Aaron, the building as a learning tool at VOS? You know, we've got some aspects that some of the new members may not be aware of, you know, like the cross, the exposed sure. beams, yeah. um, the solar arrays and the panels that are really learning tools for kids. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have a, kind of a storm exposed storm water system just to help uh, in the courtyard of the building, which is really cool. You can see kind of how the rain drains come down and, and feed these planters. The solar arrays actually will be fed into a, we'll have like an iPad yeah, that will be available yeah. for kids and they can be doing some, there's some lesson science and math and other things that. So much power is being generated. Exactly, and money being saved and that type yeah. of thing, so it's great. Um, so the kids are learning from the place that they're inhabiting, so it's great. Um, so again, the bond measure, um, uh, the bond program information webpage. And then we've had some great media related to back to school, and certainly uh, Paul uh, did a great job representing the district uh, at uh, Hazeldale Elementary, describing uh, for the Valley Times and what KETU, and we also had KGW and some other folks out to um, some of our sites during back to school. And um, so we've had, you know, some good play in the press and um, been able to really nail the key points that we want to say that we're on track to finish this project on budget and uh, just the great community assets that these are for the for the communities. So that's what we have. Any I questions? I think the news stations kind of like to have some places where they can go, unlike Portland Public Schools, where it's not all gloom and doom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's nice to go to a Hazeldale. It's, yeah. Everything's working the way that it was supposed exactly. to. Exactly. Right? completed and we're not looking for another Million. Exactly. And um, we actually have some press that will be coming out, I think, uh, tomorrow related to the Five Oaks um, renovation, the first phase. The first, because they have nine new classrooms. Mm -hmm. They converted a, a, a upper gym into nine new classrooms. And so they're working that project. And that's a two year you know, window for that project uh, to be completed. So pretty exciting. Yeah. No more portables at Five Oaks. Yeah. That's right. So they're already gone. No more upper gym, though. That's, that's, uh, I, I coached many, many youth basketball games. Yeah. Upper gym. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that's kind of hard to take. Yeah. Well, that was in the day when it was a junior yeah. high. A junior yeah. high school. Design. You know, they needed that. That was part of the program in the day. And so now it's a middle school, a 76 degree grade. We still have two gyms, though. Yep, we absolutely. And we showed, so so for Dick and Jerome, we, we showed the the, uh, the rest of the team the inner layout of Five Oaks, but the, over time the additions were done at that school. So currently you actually have classrooms that to get to them you have to pass through another classroom. <laughs> Go yeah. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. Yeah. So we have, you know, so you have that during the day, you have a class that's like, oh, excuse us, we're going to cut through here as well. So we're fixing all that interior configuration. We've added that, those nine classrooms, which is mostly from, it was it was a larger school to, for the junior high school, now it's a middle school, so there's programming space we could gather to reconfigure to build those nine. And then the addition will be included with those hallway reconfigurations. Uh, a brand new library as well, a brand new administrative office out at the front of the building, which also helps with security. So they'll have, right now the office is not at the front of the building. So a visitor comes in and has access to the entire population before checking into the office. So that would be moved up to the front where you have to come into the office through our security systems there as well. So it's going to be a great, uh, it's a great project on a renovating a, an old school that's got as we, as a, my professor would say it's got great bones, and so we're uh, we're fixing up the skin. Give it a little facelift. Did you um, maybe um, some of the new members? Maybe we should do a tour of the facilities, like you guys did last year, like Hazeldale, one of the meetings. Uh -huh. We can look that out because I think it's really good to see what the new elementary school footprint looks like. It's a lot different than um, schools that we went to. Sure. Yeah. Right, we can uh, we can schedule our next meeting for out at Hazeldale, yeah. and we'll add a tour of the new facility as well. Tom, to, to, Tom, to your point about um, cost overruns, um, if you haven't seen the stories, um, Portland Public's latest cost estimates for Madison High School is $200 million. Lincoln High School is $242 million, and Benson is $269 million. Oh, they're going to have to skip And none of those include land acquisition. Okay. No, everybody's... Uh, Running into the same thing. In hindsight, it was, it was a difficult time when we were started and when the high school was underway. But we got ahead of the curve because yeah. it got worse and worse and worse right. to what it is today. And right. Yeah, I, I follow the yeah. public close. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do. Cheryl, what are they going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about money, money, pay grade. Right. Uh, it's a huge challenge. One of the ideas decide. on the table is to basically postpone much of the funding for um, Benson to the next bond measure, assuming voters approve another major bond measure. I mean, that's like $140 million of projects not being funded out of the 2017 bond. And, boy, that's, that's a hard conversation to have with the yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that we can learn from why these uh, Portland schools are going over budgets so that uh, we can sort of keep that in mind going forward, even though right now we may not need the lessons, but you know. We can't. We, we, we uh, periodically meet with the staff down there as well, and we, we do have a bond accountability committee member from Portland yeah. as well, <laughs> right? So we, we can do, we'll, uh, you know, I, I, they're a little busy at the moment down there, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get some time with them to do some lessons learned and uh, talk with them. We certainly have tried to share lessons from Beaverton's program mm -hmm. with Portland, so we, we have a good, good relationship with, uh, with the team down there. Well, it's a great idea. one of the things that everybody has to learn is that, I would think, is that uh, the Beerton School District, Portland Public Schools, along with several others in the state, everybody's doing this at the same time. And what we've heard from the very beginning, Hoffman, uh, uh, Hoffman all the contractors, uh, there's not enough of them. They don't have enough school laborers. Right. Uh, that's the first time in all of my years in Oregon that, that school districts have had so many major projects <clears throat> on the table at the same time. I doubt, well, I know them in my lifetime, <laughs> but I doubt that uh, we'll see the same need for all of these schools having attention 
uh, over the next 40 years once we get through and hopefully Portland Public does get through there. So that then everything starts from ground zero and hopefully everybody learns a lesson too that you don't wait 40 years for it to be uh, knock three schools down, uh, rebuild a brand new high school. That it's done in stages. Uh, Maureen, uh, you remember Mike? Well, I, I shouldn't say his name because he might get in trouble. But uh, somebody's director for uh, for Nike. Uh, I can remember him saying that uh, at one of our early <coughs> early meetings in 2013, uh, if they just would do maintenance on these buildings rather than waiting until they're falling down and then having to uh, build new ones. Uh, and this is an architect talking, and his point was, uh, I'd much rather see some of the, uh, the things that uh, are, I don't know, Act was not a good example, uh, it's the only one left, but uh, don't know that there's anything that was right. a monument that could have been kept and uh, refurbished. Now Portland does have some of those, and it would be much better to work on uh, keeping those updated rather than waiting the 40 years or whatever the number is. Uh, Right. It's a great point, Tom, and you know we we discuss we work on the maintenance budget for improvements as well across the district. And I, I would say we have some of those midlife schools. Great examples is uh, like Conestoga mm -hmm. Stoller, mm -hmm. that we get to that 20, 30 year age where you need to make some maintenance investment in those to extend the life and not let them deteriorate. And we we have lots of facilities that to me are at that critical age where it's an absolute, like Stoller, my, my son goes there, absolutely great school, but it's at an age where we have to make uh, decisions about investing in it to keep it to that standard or to let it go downhill and become the next William Walker or, or, or Five Oaks to where we are. Mm -hmm. Well, and the other thing you have to remember is, you know, we were unified as a school district in 1960. Yeah. So we actually acquired some existing buildings. And some of our buildings, I mean, they're 100 years old. I mean, look at, you know, Beaver and High School is 100 years old, right? Yeah. And and the way that teaching and learning happens, it, it changes. And then look at the impact of technology and the infrastructure that has to happen and the investments. Those are big investments that have had to take place. Right. And I think too, and, and Tom, that, so right now there's $8 billion in public projects in the local area over the next few years to be completed. That's just public as well. And our bond, our bond program, it, it is, uh, it's, it, it's incredible where we're at. Uh, so when you think about an eight-year bond program, uh, cost estimates that were developed in 2012 that we're still working off of in this bond measure. So there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of, uh, a little bit better than the weatherman that we're at this point as well, especially with the way the market has gone. And especially compared to the way the weather's been, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I actually just came from a meeting at Skanska in downtown Portland, and they were saying that they're not taking on any new projects that start before 2020 right now, if they can help it, because they are beyond capacity. They're competing for labor. You know, they have subs that they work with all the time. So they have very good relationships with them, but everybody is just feeling such pressure. And they're an excellent contractor. They did the Timberland Middle School project mm -hmm. for us. So it was kind of astounding to say that they're not looking for any new work for mm -hmm. the next year and a half. Yeah. 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 So we have one more on there, Cheryl. Yeah. Uh, Paul, do you want to handle this? Sure. So uh, Brian put this on, but he's not here. So Brian is our chairman. Um, Cheryl is our vice chair. And the uh, the charter gives the term of the uh, chairman is a one-year process. Brian's right at that one year uh, of his term. And so uh, the the charter, it does it allows the, uh, the committee to uh, extend that term to a second year if they desire. I don't think, I think Brian wanted this on the agenda, which tells me he may not be interested in that extension, but he's not here, right? right? And well, which gives you a lot of power today. Um, but uh, with, with that understanding that, with that, it automatically the vice chairman was up to the chairman position, which would be transition, I believe, in the, in the month of September. It was the one year point for Cheryl to become the chairman. Um, so there's, there's that decision uh, of you know, whether you want to extend Brian. Uh, Cheryl automatically moves up, if not, but then discussion about uh, interest in, in becoming the vice chairman of the committee. 
And I don't think we have to make nominations tonight. It can be a matter if you want to think about that. Uh, we, we, we went without a vice chair for quite a while last year. We probably want to do that a little quicker, but um, it wouldn't have to be voted on tonight if I think Brian, comes to that. I think Brian gave uh, quite a dissertation on uh, the transition of power, if you will, uh, yeah. and indicated that he wasn't, uh, wasn't interested in uh, uh, staying in the chair. Uh, that being said, uh, like you say, the move's automatic, and I know we had some discussion uh, about uh, a vice chair, and, my, and I'm not making any kind of suggestion of a motion, but uh, uh, I think Carl Schultz is, uh, and this is the first meeting that he's missed, uh, I think, for forever. Uh, and I think Carl uh, had indicated along the line uh, interest in uh, a movement up into uh, some of the uh, leadership positions. Uh, and I think you do an excellent job. So I just I throw that out and know from conversations that I've had with Brian uh, the, all well the chairs that have existed. Uh, we we've all talked about uh, where it comes time to uh, pass the baton. Peter, I'm just picking on him because he's not here. Yeah. I know he's, <laughs> Yes, we can do a lot to him. Yeah. <laughs> Make him chair for life or something. Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Uh, um, happy to have discussion now or, or continue it in September when we have more members available. I, and I'm happy to serve in whatever capacity you would like me to serve in. Well, with Tom, I heard Brian clearly say he was ready to hand off. So. I'm all for it. I'll still get the chair. Thank you. Thank you for your willingness to do that. It's a good group. I, I don't know how you do, but <laughs> congratulations, chair. Yeah. yeah. I've been wondering about that myself. It's like you're right. <laughs> but I'm not the chair, and it's uh, it, it's, it's a great committee. There's great people, and it's I go and uh, listen and learn a lot from them. Okay. Well, do we do we want to wait and make well, a motion I, to uh, get a vice chair because it's the, the chair? I, I think it's only out of courtesy you wait for the individual to actually be yeah. president of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you're saying, Tom. Yeah. Let's, let's not do this to it. <laughs> yeah. And it is automatic, so there's no vote required for Cheryl to move up. It would take it it, it, it would take an extent a vote for extension of Brian, which he does not want. So, uh, with the discussion here, it sounds like Cheryl is the chairman chairperson and then uh, we can uh, up to you if you I, I think because Carl's not here we probably no, I, wait for the next meeting. That's why I said I wasn't suggesting we right. Good. Right. Has anybody had any conversations with uh, with Carl? I think there's been some just discussion uh, as the meetings have gone on. Uh, about his willingness I mean no I uh, I haven't had a direct one. I, I'd be happy to reach out to Carl and we'll actually work with us for many years. So I think that would be a nice question. All right. Any any new business? We're good to go. All right. I get credit for getting us out of here in an hour and fifteen minutes. Awesome. Right? Oh, okay. So we, we have one thing to show you. So we made a little uh, uh, video of our summer work, both uh, lawn and maintenance, that we'd like to show real quick. What's the audio? What? Audio. Uh, I don't know when. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So while he's figuring out the technical difficulties, we. We always get asked, how was your summer? Like, you work for a school district, so you get it off, right? <laughs> no. And so in response to that, we thought we'd tell everybody what we did do. Yeah. My summer, scrubbing and stripping floors. Here at Bethany, we get to spend our summers replacing all the pipes in the building and tearing out the old fixtures. And putting in new ones, too. <laughs> Over my
my summer break, I spent maintaining water quality facilities. We spent our summer finishing his elementary. <laughs> <laughs> I spent my summer waxing floors at Highland Park. Really yeah, beautiful. Hey, Chris, what's up? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we spent our summer break trimming trees on this big property. I spent my summer resetting the condos on thousands of walkers. Oh. Oh, on the summer sunny day, it may be strange to think about the upcoming rainy season, but I spent my summer re-roofing the Mountain View Middle School, so when the students come back in the fall, they won't need their umbrellas in the classrooms anymore. <laughs> I spent my summer break working on the security projects for the elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools. I spent summer break mowing all the food for the district. Hey, Ridgewood community. Hello again. You thought Ridgewood was cool before? We're making it even cooler. <laughs> Hi. I spent my summer break getting the ball fields ready for fall play. <laughs> I spent my summer break removing the damaged floor at Solar Middle School cafeteria to make it a nice polished concrete. I spent my summer at Sunset High School refinishing the gym floor just in time for this volleyball camp. <laughs> this summer, we spent it cleaning carpets all over the district. Hi again. Steven couldn't be here because he's out working on his other projects, but part of his summer break was spent replacing all of this fence at Cedar Park Middle School. We're here at Five Oaks Middle School. This summer, we made your portables disappear. Where <laughs> <laughs> we made more plastic inside. We spent our summer demolishing William Walker Elementary School. But don't worry, we're going to build a brand new school for you. We spent our summer break in this building. Thank you for all that work got done. Clearly, we should stick to our day jobs, which is making your schools incredible. Welcome back. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah, it's been out. We've five times. When it started playing, I saw that about a week ago and thought, that's good. That's really good. Somebody that's wandering around on the website. It's uh, interesting to see what summer work is. It's been a busy summer. So it's the capacity at Almond has been increased because it said that you're moving portables from five volts to seven we are. We, we're putting two no, double portables down there because that's. We just had an incredible growth in the Almonica area with the apartments uh -huh. complexes that we're building there, and so that's there. And then I won't use the word boundary change, but there, we, there's potential for some need to adjust some boundaries in there and take some of that load off Almonica for the future. So there's no. It's just portables. There, there isn't a project now. There's nothing to it to expand the size of Almonica in the, in the bond. In our bond. In the deck, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.